G'day folks. Well, I was rummaging around at the local scrapyard and found this little gem. Uh, this is a uh, it's an old marine thruster motor. Actually, it's not even that old. It's 2011 dated. Uh, I'm going to be seeing how viable it is to restore. It appears to have just had a spray of salt water go through it and it's rusted all the brushes in place. They're not even touching the armature anymore. Uh, apart from that, it looks okay. I've had the back off it. It is from a side power thruster system made by Slipnir Motor AS Norway. Uh, made in 2011, it's not particularly old. 24 volt, probably roughly 6 kilowatts, and it's very light, so it'd be ideal for a fun little cart or something like that. Maybe not a bike because getting big batteries into something like that's a bit hard, but big batteries on a ride on mower chassis or a cart drift cart chassis or something that's a bit more doable you can put some nice big fat tires on it to handle the load the weight and uh, have a little bit of fun these only have limited duty cycles i think this one's about three minutes but that's enough to do a quick drag or something like that that or i just run it at partial output capacity and get a much longer duty stop cycle or even find another way of cooling it, maybe even forced fanage and water cooling or something like that, make a jacket for the um, field housing. So, yeah, there's the uh, main dates there and info. As you can see, it's had a bit of salt water sprayed through it. Everything's a bit rusty. The springs are still intact. And I've examined down inside it with a bright light and none of the um, com bars are actually burnt. So, it didn't sit locked up burning, it just stopped. It probably ran for a while. Um, the brushes obviously couldn't move and it ran and ran and ran until it wore the brushes away and just lost contact. And it's got four sets of brushes, four pairs of brushes. Um, reversing contactor on top. Don't know if that works. Again, everything's been doused in a bit of seawater. And probably had a seal failure somewhere or something like that and it's just killed the thing bearings will need to be done it's got the electronic interface module still on it again everything's corroded I'd say they've had an incident a flood or even uh, it doesn't appear to have been fully submerged it looks like it's just been gradually sprayed with water over a period of time and some parts are well rusty and some aren't so I'd say it's just been gradual death yeah anyway I don't know what that's for a little sensor down there it's almost like a thermistor but it just goes straight to there could be a suppressor actually an anti-arcing suppressor so I'm going to try and take this end bell off and just wash it out the whole thing's going to end up having to be washed to get rid of the salt I'll just leave it in uh, fresh water probably overnight until tomorrow leave as much of it as I can probably not the solenoid block but the rest of it in fresh water and let it uh, let it stew overnight and uh, wash some of the salt dissolve some of the salt this I might have to try and um, might go the uh, electrolysis bath method um, for now I'll probably just let it soak in the solution rather than running electricity through it try and free up some of these brushes because the um, bicarb soda and water solution is incredibly good at just dissolving light oxides like the aluminium oxide and whatever's sticking these brushes in place it just softens it up water I know a lot of people swear by oil-based substances. I want to avoid them for the time being. But um, water-based substances, particularly a very soapy one like the washing soda and water that I'm running, is uh, very good for dissolving light, non-ferrous oxides. Again, I still want to clean the springs, but at least if I get the brushes and everything out, then I can put it back in again, or each spring individually, and use electrolysis just to de-rust it a bit. Arresting the corrosion from the salt is the main thing. But overall, it looks quite salvageable. And it looks like a beast of a motor, especially if it is actually rated to like 6 or 7 kilowatts in that little 20 kilogram frame. That could be a bit of fun. Actually, a lot of fun. Anyway, I am going to log all these cables. It's a D1. So the pair of D1s, they go to the front of the uh, field. D2 goes to the rear of the field, so that's the field windings, which it switches, obviously switches the field windings and the brushes to reverse direction. 
A2 goes to, oh, I think that's a main bar for the brushes, and uh, you've got positive and negative going to the, uh, well, yeah, positive and negative to the brushes. You A2 seems to go down inside there somewhere. I'll find out when I take it apart. Also got to get the fan off. Fan bearing, circlip, all the bearings are shot, so it's just a matter of uh, freeing it up enough to press it or pull it apart with a puller. And we'll see what goes, see what happens from there. I reckon this thing will be quite fixable. Be good on a little ride on lawnmower or something like that. You get into a lot of trouble with that. <laughs> Do wheel stands. I definitely need a wheelie bar, especially if it's a rear rear motor lawnmower like a, the Simplicity that I used to have. I think that was a rear motor or whatever it was. No, it might have been a. It was one of those cheap pressed metal mowers. The thing had just wheel stand with the, with the weight of a uh, engine and battery on the back, or motor and battery. Okay, I'm starting to get it apart. This is sort of also a reference for myself on what goes where. The beauty of having a camera. And probably also a reference for anyone at home who's probably pulled one apart. Because the amount of times I've had people message me saying, I pulled this apart, you did it in your video, what wire goes where? Because uh, often I don't show it in its entirety. Like I don't do full two hour rebuild videos with every little scrap of information. Uh, I often get questions like that. And I often question myself, especially, like it might be several weeks before I get this back together again, depending what needs to be done. So yeah, I'm just logging information at the moment. Knowing that D1 goes to the top, D2 goes to the top, well, left. Looking at the back of it, top right's D1, top left is D2. But little ones like this guy here, that goes to uh, positive off the main housing, there's brushes, all the way to there. It's got the red wires, yeah. Red wires, po positive power for the coils, as you can see, one. Yeah, positive goes down there. No, it doesn't. It goes... Yeah, it does. It loops around and goes to the other coil. And they're switched on the negative by the looks of it. Because... No, blue wire is not connected to that wire. That blue wire... Oh, yeah, that goes into the um, control module. Where is second blue wire going? Second blue wire... Oh yeah, second blue wire goes into the control module as well. Actually, no, that's a grey wire. Ah, yeah, it's not blue, that's grey. So, grey is one solenoid, blue is the other, and they both go into the uh, middle of that plug. Which is a pretty simple circuit to rig up. I wouldn't need that. I could cut all this wiring off and still rig the thing up to work. It's mainly where the main DC goes. In this case, it seems pretty straightforward. It's just changing the field by the looks of it. Yeah. Yeah, A2. No, sorry, not A2. Um, A2 is down here. That's positive. Where did A2 go? That's A2. Yeah. A2 goes into there. It's white. So you connect up with that on that lug there. So that all comes over. And he comes in like that. A2 comes off the brushes, I think. There's a big copper ring going all the way around. I think it's part of the brushes. There's a phenolic mounting in there. Yeah, it's probably power for the brushes. Although we've still got these two here. It'll be interesting to see how they wind this for reversing. A lot of motors you just change the polarity and they... Uh, change direction but in this case they seem to be just changing the field interesting it would be nice to have another like time-lapse camera just to have running but that's later on I'm sort of in the market for another camera but I'm sort of doing up a few cars at the same time you know how it is okay well these two are interesting one seems to go down to the brushes here the other one disappears I'm wondering if it's just monitoring the activity of the motor to tell this controller. Maybe it tells the controller not to reverse until the motor comes to a stop. Because when the motor's actually spinning, it'll be generating a little bit of power as it coasts down. I wonder if this is actually a monitor to tell it that it's stopped and then it can engage reverse. You don't want to engage reverse when it's really running because 
or quick swap from forward to reverse because all of a sudden your amp draw will go up and you'll blow your main fuse. So it's kind of uh, interesting. Uh, that contact has definitely had some water go through it. You have to strip that down if, if it's possible. It looks like it's possible. I hope it's salvageable because it'd be nice to have the original uh, starting gear for it, control gear for it. So that one there, that's black to well, one with a negative stripe on it. Black to black. And that one there is brown to yellow. Yeah, yellow's going down in here. Which is sort of tied into something. Might even be a thermal cutout or something. I'd say so. There has to be some kind of temperature monitoring on this thing. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, I'll keep stripping it down now that I've logged where everything goes. Again, that's positive. You've got solenoid 1 and 2. That one there goes to A2. Up in there. If it doesn't help me out, it'll help somebody else out. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, she's definitely seen better days. That cooling fan's blown salt spray all through it. I'm going to have to soak it. These are all well and truly enamelled and laminated and coated and what knotted. I'm not fussed about them getting wet. Just want to get rid of this salt. That end didn't want to come out. This end just slipped straight out. So the rotor I probably won't bath, but I'll at least wash it down. Yeah. Again, it probably won't kill it. I'm going to need new bearings. I've got to try and separate it though. Get my little puller in there and push it out. Just a big starter motor. <laughs> it's really all it is. It's just such high duty cycle. And there's no way in hell you'd burn it out without blowing your main breaker. What a ripper. I just want to get that housing out and soaking in some uh, washing soda solution to try and dissolve all this uh, light oxide that's falling off. Same with the uh, salt, and then I'll uh, move it over to fresh water. This housing, well, I could do it dry, but I want to get rid of the salt. Should be fine. Alright, our little armature is out, and we're looking good. The com bars don't look good because they're all arc pitted and covered in crap. But a light skim will get rid of all of that on the uh, lathe. I'll probably take it to work simply because it's more accurate. Um, the brushes themselves are going to need a bit of TLC as well. A bit of emery cloth laid over the com bars and uh, you just rub the brush back and forth in its uh, direction of rotation and uh, cleans a lot of that scoring and other debris off. They're certainly not particularly happy being as scored as they are but I can clean them up. Yeah, it's going to have to come apart. Rear bearing's shot. Front bearing's still nice and smooth. It hasn't copped anywhere near as much moisture as I thought it had. Might leave that one. I'll just replace the front for the time being anyway. I've probably even got one in stock. It's a very common looking bearing. I think I actually have that sort of size in stock. It should be a 20 millimeter shaft. Yeah, 20 mil by 16 or 18 mil deep. I'm pretty sure I have one of them. Uh, there's that ring that I was looking at inside. So you've got one stud there connected to these two and the other one there also yeah, ah, uh, see. Positive and negative and you also got this one here connected from one side to the other, okay. That's interesting. No idea what that connected to, that was floating around inside when I got it. Some of that monitor monitoring stuff can pretty much go. I'll make my own controller, get rid of the module, all that sort of stuff. I don't need its own specific controller. I just need some good 200, 250 to 400 amp contactors. And to clean this poor thing up, it's a mess. The stator housing or the field housing sitting in a bucket of water at the moment. I've given the poles a bit of a scrub with some uh, 
emery cloth and scotch bright and they've come up all right but this little guy well i think i'll just sand that off and turn it down i mean there's no real need to immerse maybe just a quick wash down that bearing's still nice and smooth and clean so i'm not going to contaminate it by washing it yeah it really is just a glorified starter motor a big one <laughs> very big all right well that's about all for tonight i'm going to take this to work and give it a bit of a clean up that I'm going to throw in the electrolysis tank without running current through it. I'm just going to let the uh, washing soda and water solution uh, do its magic at just dissolving light oxide and dirt. Um, the bearing in the back shot, that's going to have to come out. I'll do that afterwards. I just want to get those brushes free without destroying them because they're well and truly stuck in their holders. It's going to be one of those tricky things. It might work, it might not. I mean, most of it is salvageable, and I'm just concerned about freeing up brushes and things without force. Uh, phenolic insulating material is pretty robust. I wouldn't expect that to uh, go bad, even with the cleaning I'm going to give it. It's, I've put that sort of stuff through hell, and it, it's not a problem. Worst case scenario, I get some of my own um, aviation-grade stuff from Boeing and uh, reproduce what it's got there. It's not like I can't do that. It won't be as neat looking, but at least little um, rectangles of phenolic with four rivet holes in them. That's not hard to make. Not at all. And the stuff I've got is basically brand new off-cut from Boeing Aviation uh, Melbourne. So it's uh, premium stuff. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for more. I'm going to get back into the videos once I'm done my big clean-up. It's still going. The big clean-up's still going. That's why you haven't seen much, but we're getting there. It's uh, definitely more spacious in here. <laughs>